last, uh, I guess, basic essential that I wanted to introduce you to um, for our primer is the idea of lighting and scale. So um, to, to communicate that, I'm just going to take this model here and I'm going to show it with one light and I'm going to calibrate that one light to illuminate the entire building. Um, the, the thing that you need to know about Maxwell is that it doesn't really read the Rhino lights the same way that it reads um, its own lighting conditions. So what you typically set up in a Maxwell render is a surface that emits light. Okay, and those are called emitters, and the materials are called emitters. Um, so in order to do this here, I'm just going to create... Oh, my lens is all crazy. Hang on. There we go. Um, so I'm just going to create a surface that's going to become my emitter. So let's just do something like that. Good enough. Doesn't need to be perfect. Um, rotate it like that and rotate it like that. Yeah, something like that. And then I need to check which direction it's going. It's going the right direction. Like that. Okay. Um, I need to set a material for it. So let's go to my scene manager. Um, here are examples of emitters. You can see that they kind of look like lights. Um, I'm going to get a little crazy with it. I don't know which one this is. Um, but let's take a look at its settings. Um, 350 watts with an efficacy of 400. That's pretty small. Um, so let's take this and I'm going to, well, let me put this on a new layer. We'll call this light. And change object layer. And I'm going to take accent one and I'm going to put it on light. So now this thing is an emitter. So I'll do a quick um, test render. Let me take a few things off of it, though. Um, scene manager, let's go to, that's fine. Actually, I don't know that I can, really. Let's change that. Let's turn on our heads up. I can't really, not until I get my tools back. All right. on draft. Okay. It should be fine. Oh, one more thing. I need to turn uh, sky or physical sky off. So let's do constant dump. All right. So um, what you're going to find is that this emitter doesn't really do much. So I'm going to say Maxwell render render right and give it a moment um, what I'm going to do here is bump it up to um, show you the difference in material right so um, right now it's only 350 watts which is kind of like having you know three and a half light bulbs that you would have in your house shining down on this thing so it's not going to work so we need to bump this thing up to like 8,000 watts maybe more um, with a high efficacy, it probably won't let me go above like 620 or something like that. I forget what it allows me to do. All right, that'll work. Redo that. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's awesome. Um, let me switch that to a 10 meter. Oh, I need way more than that. Can we go up this high? Six eighty three, that's gonna max out. Yeah, there we go. That might work. Might get me some lights. So this is a hundred thousand watts that I bumped this up to. Let's see what it does. And I'm just gonna look at the, the building itself. So render, render. All right. So um I guess you know, seeing, seeing how it's brightening up this scene, I want to just take it down in scale 
and uh, look at our small model. Okay, so that's the next step is comparing that to the small model. So I'm going to stop this. I'm going to take this light, bring it over to our little guy, which I forget where he is. Ah, he's right here. There. Go here. I need to scale this thing down probably. Okay, so 100,000 watts on top of a 24-inch uh, tall building. Let me do just a quick draft. We'll look at it from the side where the light's coming in. Render, render. Give it a moment. Well, we can still talk about them. So. Um, what you can, I guess, get the sense of with this really incredibly low resolution image that I did as a draft um, is that, you know, even though, um, even though there's, you know, still light on the thing, you can see that, you know, some elements are in shadow, some elements are not, right? But in this one, um, there's so much light and it's bouncing off of all these surfaces within it that quite literally everything is completely washed out. Okay, so that's the physical implication that I'm referring to, is, you know, 40,000 watts is going to wash it out, but 100 watts won't, right, at that scale. So that's very, very significant. Um, anyway, so do you have any questions about that before we kind of start wrapping up a little bit? Yeah. So what's, do you recommend uh, rendering on the smallest model, right, rather than the large one? Uh, it Again, it depends on... Yeah, it depends on a few things, yeah. Um, I would say if if you're rendering accurately and you're rendering a lot of the lights that you're going to have in your environment, then um, you should do it full scale. Or you increase the the wattage of all the lights that you're using by a factor, you know, and it's it's very different for every project, but by a factor of how many lights you're missing is kind of the key that I found. That's for exterior renders. For interior renders, it's quite different because usually you're just going to wash out whatever's happening outside of your building. If it's a small portal, if it's a big portal, it's different. But um, the interior lights are critical that they need to be pretty physically accurate. 